In this video, we're going to update the topic service and uh, remove this hard-coded list and actually make this work with the data layer, make it connect to the actual database and uh, run queries on top of it. And when you make saves, like, you know, create or an update, it actually updates the database, not just this hard-coded list. How do we do this? We added the JPA support. We added the Spring Data JPA support in the last uh, video just by adding this pom.xml section. You could have just taken this dependency and put it into the old pom.xml and that would have been just as what we have over here, right? So nothing much has changed. So this dependency and um, this Apache Derby dependency. So those are the two things we've added to the class path. Now, how do I go about actually using JPA? The first thing I need to do is open the model class. This is the entity class, right? This is the topic. I need to tell JPA that this is the thing that needs to be saved to the database, right? We need to save topic instances. We need to map this object, objects of this topic class to the relational database table. So I would ideally like it to create a topic table and uh, each one of these member variables should go as columns in that database and each instance of this topic class should go as rows in that table, all right? So how do I tell JPA that? Again, I do this by using annotations. So there is one annotation called the at entity that I need to mark to the class itself to tell JPA that this is an entity class. So that I do by going here and saying at entity. Now this add entity I import from Java X start persistence. Now with this add entity, JPA knows to create a table called topic and that table is gonna have three columns. It's gonna have an ID column, a name column, and a description column, and all of them are gonna be text columns. Now, I need to tell JPA one more thing, what the primary key is. You remember in a relational database, every table should have a primary key. Now, what's the primary key gonna be? Which of these three columns? So I need to give JPA that hint. So I need to tell JPA that, well, this, choose this one as a primary key. So I do that by using another annotation, which is a field level annotation, which is called at ID. So whatever member variable corresponds to the column that I want to be the primary key column, I mark that member variable in the class with the at ID annotation. Again, this is from javax.persistence. So with this, I actually am done configuring the entity. So this is going to be my entity. And now with this, JPA knows exactly what to do in order to create the table or to read from it or whatever, right? So it can convert a topic instance to a row in the database table, and it can convert a row in the database table to a topic instance. It can do both now with just this configuration because everything else is kind of implicit, right? The, the property name corresponds to the column name, so it knows exactly what to do. It's gonna run queries for you and create topic instances and vice versa. So this is the first step. We have an entity mapping. Now the second step is to use the topic service to connect to the database and run those commands, right? You need to somehow tell JPA, hey, I wanna save this topic instance, I wanna read the topic instance. So you need some kind of a class, a data class, a data service rather, which has those methods. So what would you typically do? Let's say I create this, uh, I'm gonna call this a new, I'm gonna create a new class. Let's say I call this topic, repository, all right? Let's say this is my uh, data service and uh, I'm gonna create methods to do all the CRUD operations. What would I typically do? I would have a method which says get all topics, which is gonna get me all the topics and I'm probably gonna have a method which says get topic given an ID. And I'm probably gonna have a method which says update topic which takes in a topic and uh, it kind of makes an update to the database. I'm probably gonna have a delete topic which is again taking a string ID. So if you look at methods like this, let's say you have built this for topics. I don't know you're gonna do this for a course, for example. What do you think the data layer for a course repository would be like? Be very, very similar. It would be a get all courses, 
a get course with an ID, update course given a course, and then a delete course with has uh, an ID that's passed to it. So no matter what your entity is, the structure kind of remains the same. You have some standard CRUD operations that you will have to do. Granted, you're going to have some extra uh, needs, right? You might have to get all topic where the description contains a particular field, for instance, right? That's unique to your model. Let's set that aside. But as far as the common things are concerned, you're probably going to be building the same methods for every entity that you're going to have uh, to write connecting to the JPA. So what the Spring Data JPA team has done is they have actually created an out-of-the-box solution for building these kind of standard methods. So you don't have to actually implement it. The framework knows that you have an entity and you have these fields which map to columns and you know that these are the standard methods they're going to have to write. So they say, well, you don't have to do this. And in fact, you don't even need to create a class. What you need to do is actually make this an interface because the Spring Data JP is going to be providing the class. So you're going to have an interface which uses the implementation that comes with Spring Data JPA. Since every repository like this has the same, those same methods, the Spring Data JPA framework comes with one common repository called the CRUD repository. All right, so there is an implementation. So this is actually an interface and they have an implementation for this, which contains the logic for any entity class. It really doesn't matter because the only thing that changes there is the type of the class, type of the entity class, but the methods and all are the same. The Spring Data JPA already has an interface and an implementation. Uh, the interface is called CRUD repository and you don't have to worry about the implementation. So what you need to do is when you build your custom repository, you just have to extend this, all right? So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna say extends CRUD repository. So this is something that comes out of the box and your custom repository will just extend it. And since this has all the common methods, you're gonna get all the common methods yourself and you just have to add implement the special methods that you need. Like I mentioned, if you wanna do a search for uh, topics which contain a particular text in the description, that would be a custom need and only those you would have to implement. But all the common stuff, like getting all the entities, selecting a particular entity, updating an entity, all that stuff is already taken care of here. All right, so I'm gonna import CRUD repository from Spring Framework Data Repository. Now, CRUD repository is actually a generic type. So I need to provide that generic type information. Now, this generic type is required because all the methods, the common methods that I demonstrated earlier, have type information, right? When you're getting a list of topics, well, it needs to return a list of topic classes. You need to return getting a list of courses. You need to, you need to return a list of topic courses. So this has that generic type information necessary. So it needs a couple of generic types. The first generic type is what is the entity class that you are working with. In this case, it's topic. So that's going to be the first one. The second generic type is what's the ID that this entity class has. We know that it's a string. So that's going to be the second generic type, which is a string. Now, for this extension, just by having this topic repository extend from CRUD repository, given a generic type, you're going to get all the methods that come out of the box with the CRUD repository. You're going to get the CRUD methods, like the name says. And with this, you should be able to make any update to a single ID or get all the entities or all that stuff. So we can actually look at that now. 